Hey media heads, so today I wanted to give my personal thoughts on the RHEL S510. I haven't heard this subwoofer until yesterday and I, I gotta I gotta be honest, it might be uh, my next subwoofer. Uh, <laughs> now, a lot of people are gonna look at the specs on the subwoofer, they're gonna see, oh well it, it's 500 watts, it only has a 10 inch driver and they're gonna just immediately be like oh 2700 bucks not for me that's a complete disservice to both your ears and this subwoofer so first let me go over what makes this subwoofer special in my opinion and why you'd buy it over its little brother the t9x uh, as well as why you would do say this subwoofer instead of their uh ht1510 for home theater. Why does this subwoofer outperform the T9X? So both are engineered for music. The main difference is the baffle on this and then the cabinet as well. The cabinet is much, much larger if you can't tell. These both are 10 inch drivers, but this cabinet is easily 50% larger. The reason for that is so that you have more air in the actual cabinet, and then that provides uh, the capability for a larger throw of the woofer. This baffle has a four inch throw. That means that woofer is moving that much whenever you push it. However, the T9X, it's a three inch throw. The HT1510 is a three inch throw. So why would you do this over either uh, output just purely output this is a subwoofer that can reach below 20 hertz and that's that's more the audio that you can feel the t9x it stops at about 26 hertz which in most rooms that is perfectly fine but in larger rooms in hi uh, higher quality speakers like let's say we're dealing with some higher end bowers and wilkins or or focal or or uh, wilson the T9X would sound bloated compared to such high-end speakers. The S510, it's engineered to keep up with them. We're talking that this driver is considerably lighter than this driver. It means it can move faster. It means it can hit harder, even though that it doesn't look like it would, despite being the same size. Another thing that I really, really like about this subwoofer is it actually has interior cabinet bracing these rails on each side actually they're steel rails that go straight through the cabinet further uh, adding more stiffness so if we're talking how tight the audio is it, it doesn't get much better now as far as this versus let's look at the ht1510 because it's a thousand dollars less right then we're talking a, a different goal the HC1510 is a, it's a home theater subwoofer. It's meant for explosions. It's meant for big booms. It's meant for that more that audio that, that hits your stomach, may, makes you feel like, a, like you want to feel Godzilla stomp. That subwoofer will do it better than any other subwoofer. However, where that subwoofer struggles is going to be speed, music. Um, it is a very, very fast subwoofer, but moving a 15 inch driver that weighs three or four times what this driver weighs, uh, it's not gonna be a, a comparison with music. The a reason why I would go with a subwoofer like this is to have the best of both worlds. You have the low frequency punch. You, you get to 20 Hertz, you get below 20 Hertz. You get that, that absolute earth shattering sound, but at the same time, there's no sacrifices. You don't sacrifice where mid-range is concerned, where the actual speed of the driver makes it sound bloated. Honestly, I'm just, I'm blown away by this subwoofer. I can't think of a speaker that wouldn't pair well with these. So I've heard this subwoofer with the XTB100s. I also heard it with the full towers from Martin Logan. Matches very well. Crossover, we had set it about 11 o'clock with the bookshelves and about eight o'clock with the towers. I didn't even have to go over 30% power. I'm just absolutely mind boggled by what the subwoofer can do. Thank you, media heads.